This week in Nerf, the community is doing awesome things in multiple ways. I'm Jangler, and every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Getting right on into it this week, I do want to say this is going to be probably a bit of a shorter episode. There was something I really wanted to talk about uh, that was shared with me. I'm like 95% sure it'd be okay to talk about, but it's that last like 5% that's... I don't want to risk it, so I'm certain we'll be talking about it next week more than likely. So uh, apologies for that, but look forward to that information next week. And uh, let's talk about the things I know I can talk about. So let's go ahead and start with Captain Slug's newest creation. Not the Esper, but this is the Wild Card Mag Adapter. This is an adapter that will take both Katana Mags and Talon Mags. This is a fantastic thing. This is uh, something I mentioned in my video that went live yesterday that he was working on. I have gone ahead and printed one out. I'm looking forward to putting it together and giving it a try. Uh, he went through a lot of rapid changes updating this over the last few days. I believe it's relatively finalized. I don't, we'll see. Uh, I'm certain there'll be tweaks coming here and there over the next few weeks as people get them in hand and test them and, and try them, but it should function as it is now. So that's something that's very exciting because I one of my big kind of gripes is that there are people that have invested into the Katana system that if they've invested heavily, they may not want to invest in the Talon system. Or if you've got a little bit of some, you've got like a few extra Katana mags, but you really like the Talon mags or vice versa, uh, you don't have to abandon those other ones completely. You can use both. And that, to me, is a great thing. And I, it didn't take long for the community to jump onto this, which is absolutely phenomenal. And as with uh, everything Captain Slug does, the files are readily available on Thingiverse. Uh, like I said, they are updated several times and we'll probably see more refinement over the future, I would assume. But uh, I haven't tested it myself yet, so I can't say whether or not it, it's fully functioning, but I'm excited about it regardless. This is something that I think really exemplifies what I love about our community, that something new comes out and we jump right onto it. Uh, something cool is made for something new and more often than not. And that to me is something I love and something that really, really excites me. So that is uh, something for you all to take a look at, print out, or see if you can get someone you know to print one if you don't have access to a 3D printer. It is really, really cool, I gotta say. A little tangent here. Um, Phone Blast has lent me one of their their uh, 3D printers for me to try and learn 3D printing and get acclimated to it and see if I want to invest in one. So thank you to them and being able to print now that I've actually done so, it's amazing. Oh my goodness. It is just watching something be created and that you have easy access to things, it's awesome. Regardless, just a bit of a side tangent uh, because of the, the, the 3D printed nature of the adapter, the uh, wildcard adapter. So go take a look at that. Link will be down below, of course. The next thing to talk about is something from Sild.com. Now, if you remember correctly, this is the website that has the interactive motor chart that I personally love to use and I thought was a great asset to the community. Well, they've gone ahead and created another great asset for the community, and this is a LiPo battery calculator. Uh, no longer will you need to do math on your own, which Granted, it wasn't that hard of math, and it was relatively simple to do, uh, and there are plenty of videos out there telling you how to do so. This just does it all for you, uh, which is pretty cool. It actually has a drop-down menu of all the different motors we use in the community, and you can pick how many of them. You can actually have multiple different types of motors. Say you've got a different pusher motor from your flywheel motors, or you're running several different stages. This accommodates all of that, and then it gives you options. Uh, you type in your stuff for the batteries you have or the batteries you're looking at buying. Uh, you can even accommodate things like headroom and this will uh, take that into account and then it will do the calculations for you and let you know all the details. That is awesome. I, I mean, plain and simple. There there's no other way to put it. It's an awesome asset to the community yet again from Sild.com. Uh, so a big thanks to big thanks to Mingbat who uh, runs sill.com and, and posts all the cool stuff up there for our community. I really, really cannot overstate how much I love things like this that just make things easier. 
Anything that makes things more accessible or easier for nerfers or, or people looking to get into the hobby in the community, it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, and I love it, and I think uh, it's something you should definitely add to your bookmarks uh, if you ever have issues trying to figure out which batteries to use with your builds. It is something you will take advantage of, and I think that's awesome. Uh, so let's go ahead, and like I said, this is going to be a bit of a short episode. We're going to go ahead and move on to our mod of the week. This week, it comes to us from Spencework. This is a semi-automatic HPA-powered Recon. I love, I love when people repurpose older shells and bring them to higher power uh, games and, and utilization, and this is no exception. This is an old school yellow recon, which everyone's seen, everyone's kind of brushed to the side now because unless you're doing a Retalicon build, they're not really that useful. But he's gone ahead and dropped a Specs BZK uh, uh, tank in the back there under one of the worker stocks, and Kaba did a video on this build, actually went into a little bit more of uh, watching it function and talking a little bit how it works, but not fully breaking it down. Hopefully there'll be something in the future because I do think semi-automatic for HPA is just a fantastic thing. Uh, if you don't have to actually be the one uh, pushing the breach back and forth and loading the, the, allowing the magazine to load the next dart in, I think that is a great, great thing and a massive asset. I know it's something we've seen done before in a few different builds, but anytime I see it, I think it's fantastic and I think it's absolutely awesome and a great, great thing uh, for those that like to use HPA or are able to use HPA because that just it makes it a powerhouse and I love it. I think it's just so cool. Um, so definitely go take a look at that. I'll have a link to their Instagram down below where they have several uh, image posts and all of that. And hopefully again, like I said, we'll get a breakdown of how it works in the future. I would really, really like that. So. Fingers crossed on that one, but uh, big ups to Spenceworks on this build. Go check it out for sure. And that leaves us with the video of the week. This week, let's follow the community uh, asset idea. And uh, let's, let's talk about making stuff awesome. Now, this is the, the person who brings us the Ultra Strife, Ultrasonic 2. This is Ultrasonic's two, Ultrasonic 2's Arduino programmer. And this is a video going through all of the details and aspects of the program that they have made to control your Arduino or, or your uh, Ultra Strife setups or anything along those lines. So you don't have to do any programming. You don't have to be the one to try and figure out why things are working or you want to change a setting and you don't know how to do that. This makes it easier. This makes it an interface on your computer that you can plug in uh, to the blaster once you pop it open and you can change things easily. And I love this. I think it's absolutely awesome. And again, resources for the community. This is one. I think brushless is super cool and it's something I've wanted to get into for a long time. There are a few factors that are a bit prohibitive though. Um, whether it's cost for some people because the components can add up or if you you know want to buy uh, an FDL which utilizes brushless technology. Um, or you want to build your own or anything like that, there's always something that makes it a little bit more restrictive generally than a simple brushed flywheel build. But the more resources we have like this, the easier it becomes. Uh, the next step would be things like uh, being able to pick up your uh, pre-wired loom from a place uh, like, I believe, Epic Whale sells some, Ultrasonic 2 sells some, I believe. Uh, there's a few vendors that sell them, and then you can drop that into your kit, or your Strife, or Swordfish, or whatever blast you're using, and then you can plug it into this program, and you can have it all set up the way you want it. So that is awesome to me. I, I think this is just something we need. We need things that make uh, more complicated or complex, at least at first, program processes or programs or whatever for mods easier to understand or easier to use to get people into them to make them more common and more popular. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm maybe rambling a bit about this, but I'm trying to kind of express how 
uh, important I think things like this are. Not only this program from uh, Ultratunk 2, but the charts and, and uh, programs or website builds from Mingbat on Sild.com and uh, all the community stuff. Just this, this is a community episode is what it's coming down to. And I think... It's awesome. Really, that's what I'm getting down to. It's awesome. And I think I think we're going to leave it there. Before I ramble on too much longer, because you know I can, let's go ahead and take it to the end. Uh, this week, thank you all so much for watching. I don't have a shirt of the week. Uh, it's been a bit of a scramble, I guess, and I forgot, so my apologies. Next week, I'll have a shirt of the week for you. But if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for the future. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular. And I'll see you next time.